Hare Krishna. So I repeat again. <laughs> Thank you all so much for coming to celebrate the 80th Vyasa Puja of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj. Very, very highly indebted to all of you. Thank you for coming and being part of this celebration. And uh, the program will be we have Kirtan till 7 o'clock. And uh, then there will be Bhoga offering while glorifications will be done by disciples of Isi Bhakti Vlanta Swami Sri Lanka Rupaliki And after that we have Pushpanjali, Agati. And then what? <laughs> so then we have a big nice Ekadashi place. So once again thank you all so much and we have Amrita Bharati.
incluso si lo pregunta.
that you conquered sex design. But Prabhupada done this, very nice, but have you conquered sex design? Prabhupada would say in his meditation. So when we're dealing with our spiritual masters, my spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, most of you are Gopal Krishnas, some of you are different Iskand Gurus, but we have an obligation that can never be paid. You can never repay your spiritual master. Never. That's why I told the boys the other day that when I got initiated, we had to write some essays. And one essay is, why do you agree to serve Prabhupada in this life and in life after life? That doesn't just apply to Srila Prabhupada, it applies to anyone that's become a disciple. Becoming a disciple means an eternal commitment to that person. So Gopal Krishna is, by Krishna's arrangement, by the arrangement of time, unexpected, nobody wanted, but Krishna took him to whatever next place he wants him to go. But has he gone? Depends. If you don't think about him, then you may forget. What I do every day so I don't forget Prabhupada, I listen to his lecture every day. Every single day. I don't want to forget his voice. I do not. I listen to his bhajans every single day. So I can see how Prabhupada sang, how Prabhupada preached. So same thing for all the disciples of Gopal Krishna. You should listen to him every day. He has dozens and dozens of lectures and things he's written or written about him. So you don't forget that you have, cannot pay the debt. You can begin to pay the debt by giving your attention to him, consciousness to him. Even his god brothers like myself, we are very attentive, have always been attentive to hearing from Gopal Krishna. I think Gita and I were remembering the other day, the first time he came to Atlanta, was it 98? 99. 99. But I really first started building my relationship with him in 1990 <clears throat> in Vrindavan. I knew him before, because we always see him in Mayapur. You know, we go to Mayapur, we're so excited to hear Gopal Krishna Maharaj's good lecture. Of course, Gaur Govinda Maharaj and Jai Bhattar Maharaj, but Gopal Krishna Maharaj is very special. So, Gita and I were just remembering. One thing about him, he always respected his God brothers. The moment he saw me in that room, he said, come on stage with me, come on stage with me. I said, Maharaj, no, no. He said, no, come sit next to me. And he asked me to speak something. He always did that. The respect he showed his God brothers is exemplary, period. So that means amongst yourselves, you have to show that level of respect to each other, seriously. And his humility is another aspect that I remember. Well, let me jump to one more thing. If you notice in the back of the temple room, there's a, a Painting, not painting, but actually a poster of Lord Ramchandra. Have you noticed that in the back corner? Yes. Do you know why it's there? Maharaj pulled me to the side first time he came to this temple. Alabhadra, if you put Ramchandra, all the Hindus will come to your temple. <laughs> so the next time he came back, I took him back. Maharaj, here he is. He said, oh, there you go. So that means I'm not his disciple, but when he gives me advice or instruction, I take it seriously. So if I'm taking it seriously, who else should take it seriously? You. Everyone. Especially disciples. Disciples have to set the example for others to follow. That's our duty. So Maharaj has given so much of his life. Again, his leaving was, to me, unexpected. I know his health was not good. But still, I'm thinking, you know, he'll push through. He'll be here. I had that confidence. I can always go to him, Maharaj, what about this? Maharaj, what about that? No. And he would always take time and answer. Sometimes he'd pull me to the side, Balabhaja, what's happening? What's going on? Tell me what's happening. It was so sweet. So when he left, it's just difficult to even conceive that he's physically gone. But I take comfort in all of you. I told you when you did the disappearance celebration, what you all spoke, I felt peaceful. But you spoke so beautifully, so... I said, these are real disciples. Not joking. Real disciples who had affection for the Guru. Not just, like Prabhupada says, not Guru, Guru. 
Guru means like a cow or something. Like Real Guru. We have to understand what Guru is. Krishna, Krishna actually became a disciple of his Guru. What is his Guru's name? Sanjapani Munya. And he studied on him and learned on him. Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he also says, if I don't do, then others will follow the wrong path. So he showed the path how to respect the spiritual master. And all of you disciples, again, everyone else, but disciples especially, we're depending on you to not let us forget go for Krishna. If you do, I will be very upset. If you don't touch my heart sometimes, and I was thinking of my Guru Maharaj today, and I was remembering this, and I was remembering that, he said like this, he said like that. If you notice the Prabhupada disciples, always talk about Prabhupada. Did you notice how Gopal Krishna always talks about Prabhupada? So he's telling you, not that they talk about me. He will never say, you talk about me, but you should talk about me. So you don't forget, and others don't forget what he's given to the world. I don't know how many temples are took in Delhi by his inspiration. How many temples? 18. That's unbelievable. 18 temples. Simply, did he build them with his own hands? How were they built? He did the same like Prabhupada. He took time and cultivated devotees, make sure they are advancing in Krishna consciousness, and temples manifest. Prabhupada said when he came to America, I had no plan to build temples. No. He wanted some building in New York City, in the big, biggest city in the world. But he said because there was some money, okay, we built some temple. For him, it was not necessary. So by Gopal Krishna's inspiration, temples are built. By his inspiration, disciples are made. By his inspiration, Prabhupada's movement is going on. So it falls upon all of you, and of course upon me, and Sikh Mahiti, and Abhayas of the Prabhupada disciples in the room today. Our duty is to put a little pressure on you to always remember your spiritual master. Never forget it. Yes, Shat Prasada. Yes, Shat Prasada. Nagati Guto. Without the mercy of Krishna, Guru, by Krishna's mercy you get Guru, by Guru's mercy you get Krishna. Without that mercy, Nagati. No going back. No attaining the supreme abode. So it's very important every day that you reinforce Fortify your, your dedication to your spiritual master. Do it, and you'll feel so happy. I mean, I feel so happy every day just in Prabhupada. It's like he's still there, because he is. He's in his words. He's in his voice. It's amazing. When I hear him, it's like I'm sitting in the same class, like my godbrother Carter Mamuni, when Prabhupada came to Atlanta, he was working in the kitchen, and he was hearing Prabhupada on the speaker. And he said, but I've always heard, heard his voice on the speaker. I never sat in front of him. He was in the temple room and he was in the kitchen, but I'm hearing the same voice. So when I hear Prabhupada's lecture, I hear the same Prabhupada. It's amazing. So the same way, you'll be with your spiritual master. Just don't forget him. How much he's given to all of you. Not only to you, but to all of the world. In India, he's so respected. Even by Narendra Modi, so many people respected him. For the what? Why did they respect Prabhupada's master? Because he made a name for himself? I don't think so. Why? Because of his dedication to Prabhupada. As I said recently, without Prabhupada, there's no Balabhadra, no Sikhriti, no Gopal Krishna, no nothing. So the real followers of Prabhupada, they just always stay at his lotus feet. The real followers of Gopal Krishna, where should you be? Sleeping at his lotus feet. Hearing him getting his instructions. The, the idea of the disciple, you follow the example of Prabhupada. Prabhupada in front of his guru never talked. He didn't try to show guru what he knew. He would, and in fact, Prabhupada said, I could not quite understand my guru Raj because he was speaking very high philosophy. But I listened. And he said, guru Raj saw something in me. And then he gave Prabhupada those instructions. So your spiritual master should see something in you. What is that? Dedication to Prabhupada. Dedication to the movement. Dedicating yourself to spreading the holy names like he did. So I humbly 
place myself at your feet, begging with a straw in my teeth. I'm not very humble, but I'll try. Beg you, please don't forget your spiritual master. I know it seems kind of weird. Why are you saying that? Because I've seen it. I'm telling you, I've seen devotees forget Prabhupada, his own disciples, and go away from the movie. So not that anyone in this room will go away, but if you forget your spiritual master, you might as well be gone. What's left? We're nothing without spiritual master. So thank you very much for allowing me to share just a few moments with you. And please, please take time every day. I'm not going to ask you to promise before the deity, because you know the story of Shakti Gopal, right? <laughs> they are my witness. I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but they are my witness that I ask you, I've done my job. <laughs> so thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. My name is Alec Maharaj, and we were, in fact, the pretty like Maharaj is coming and talking to us, sending this information to us. It's an impact. Now I request His Grace Sikhimati Prabhu to come and do it for Maharaj. So, of course, Gopal Krishna Maharaj, everyone knows the glories of Maharaj, all he's accomplished for Srila Prabhupada. And if you think back to the beginning of the movement in 1968, it's practically nothing. <clears throat> the devotees even have a difficult time trying to eat. And Gopal Krishna Maharaj, of course, is big, big position. How many people have management position like Gopal Krishna now? How many? And yet he gave that up. Can you imagine that? And especially coming from India, so much endeavor, go to foreign university. You can imagine parents, village, so many people. I mean, I don't think he came from village, he came from the city. Yeah, city, but still. So many relatives. Oh, my son, yes, yes, yes. Now he's Hare Krishna. <laughs> Poor Hare Krishna, not like nowadays. To be Hare Krishna in India now is very prestigious, isn't it? Yeah, do you want to join Brahmacharya Ashram in Mumbai? Do you have a bachelor's degree? Uh, have you had any work experience? Don't even, don't even try. America, maybe you will take you. In India, no, they don't even know how to. So you can imagine that obviously he was uh, maybe a sentimental, but he was sent by Krishna for sure to, to have that realization and to withstand all the backlash that's coming from surrendering to Prabhupada. Of course, I think later on, like you could see, he's become, even maturely speaking, he's glorious. I mean, how many people get to meet? You know, Prime Minister of India. They know you. You know, they, they glorify you. So many heads of state. And he's, he's such a diplomat. He was everything. He's such a diplomat. Materially speaking, he was so wonderful. And then he took those qualities and used them in Prabhupada's service. So we see that he's preaching in Russia in the early days, America, so many places, and so many temples. He's open. I used to uh, beg him sometimes, Mark, can you just stay in Atlanta so we can <laughs> open up one more temple, you know? <laughs> North American GBC too much. <laughs> oh, please. Krishna from, these things come about, of course, by Krishna. He uses the devotees for sure. But, you know, of course, I don't like when people say that, oh, we, whatever Krishna arranges for me. No, he wants you to do something voluntarily. We're not robots. So that kind of diminishes the, the power that the devotees have. So obviously he was empowered. Otherwise he couldn't accomplish all those things. And then what I noticed, especially in the last two years or so, how uh, the Balabhadra mentioned, how he, he was very protective of his god brothers. 
you know, some God brothers, you know, they get those positions. Not that they get the positions, but they're so busy and they're so swamped, they can't even come out because so many people are all down and they need some time to, I guess, get their energy back. So like, go to Christian job, I talk to the door is always open. <laughs> I went out, I want to see Gopal Krishna Maharaj. I think he's speaking to somebody in Pullman. Oh, bring in Sikhi Mahidi now. I was like, what? I was waiting to, with time to come, because I know he's busy. No, no, sit down right here, Sikhi. This is my grandmother's Sikhi Mahidi. Uh, who am I? You know, I mean, I might fix some things in the temple, you know, a little bit, distribute some books. It's not like, you know, I'm a big donor, or I got people who give big donations. You know, it's not like, I, you know, I got to keep them happy because all of them to do something for me. He generally loved his, his God brothers. And I remember one God brother who got in trouble. All of us have a little trouble here and there, but he got in some big trouble to the point where he was practically out of his comments. I'm not going to say that. And then he, he realized in the end he really messed up. So I remember he comes to Maya for us. He's the same now. And he could not even stay on his kind of property. GBC was so mad at him. Still, he came. I was. I, said, I don't know how you can even show up after what you did. All of you sometimes you make a mistake. To get some forgiveness. Nobody wanted anything to do with him. I go to our Christian march immediately. Right in the middle of my door, and he walked up to him. Come, come with me. Come, come. Took him up to the front, and he resolved that. I mean, it took time. To this day, he still don't want to be a class, but, he's, <laughs> but still, he's, you know, and uh, I was just amazed at that, you know, most people's white shy. He was so loving, so Christian conscious. And the last memory, of course, that we all saw, you know, in his final days, and he's, he's sleeping and he's doing art to him. <laughs> I wish I had dreams like that, huh? You know what I mean? been doing art, you can worship with me. Oh, no, another last story, then I'll stop this. Shanagam Shiva. There's a particular time, I think around 2000, or 1999, Shanagam was really coming into Islam. Everybody was having it. So, <laughs> he loved coming to Atlanta because there's a devotee here. I don't know how he get all these he shaped shower gums. And uh, he liked to, of course, show, oh, look at the shower gum I have. So first time go to call Christian, you know, go call Christian Martin. And he brings them to shower gums. He okay, I'll take that one, that one, that one, <laughs> And I could see his face, he was like, Marge didn't care, he took off all the shields. I said, told you don't show me your shields. <laughs> He's going to take off all of them. I didn't show him mine, because I wanted to tell him no. <laughs> And uh, he worshiped them every day. Every day. Even in my words, it's like he would go to the world. So many shivas and just and the taste of deity worship. Taste of all the kind of Christian God, preaching and everything. He made it management, he was expert and everything. So anyways, he's truly missed as probably about through into like Maya Poor Festival, that was one of the highlights. Gopal Krishna Maharaj there, especially with the flag raising, he gave up such a nice speech together when ready for the festival classes. This is presence, so uh, it was truly missed. But now we have to grow ourselves and go on with the service and continue to serve Prabhupada and also do something to pay Maharaj back, right? Like Prabhupada did saying this. He's given us so much, so what do we do? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. No, no, you do something. <laughs> we try to do something extraordinary. Let's try. Even if you don't succeed, at least we can try. Let's hold it. Let's go for Krishna Maharaj. Key! Now I request uh, His Grace Abhya, Ashray Prabhu, to come and go to that marriage. महाराज के सार्वत में आधा जीवन दिया है। I live with him my whole half of life with him, and he'll uh, 
such an inspiration, uh, enthusiastic about doing anything, devotional service. Example, like, he liked to do mula, one thing, that very much. You all know that uh, I was a pujari in Bombay, it was a small temple, if not even big temple. And whenever he in the Bombay comes, we don't know him, sometimes he comes late night, maybe 11, 12, we don't know where he comes from. But if we heard the Maharaj, it's not that time, he was not Maharaj, he was a uh, <laughs> to Balkishna. So uh, now I'm talking about uh, yeah, 76, 77. So I was a small, I was Pujari anyway, Bombay, small Pujari. The Bombay big temple it didn't even open, it was still uh, uh, making temple. But we heard that, okay, the Balkishna Maharaj is here. So he has to, you know, so we know that we'll, we'll make it ready, but sometimes he was like one minute late, but we think, oh, he's made me come back, but he's ready there. And one incident also, he's chanting. So myself, another Pujari, only two Pujari on Bombay, small temple, and we had like sign at uh, nine o'clock, like just for 10 minutes sign already those days. And then we finish that, we finish everything, you know, the garland for the next day, dressing and everything. And uh, we go, we had a Brahmachari Ashram all the way back, we had to walk. And Maharaj also lived in the same building. And then when we walk to the, the building, then we're hearing somebody chanting. <laughs> And then he's walking back and forth, he's chanting. Then we should say, you have not finished your six and round yet? No, 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 I have only four. Four. I'm out of sleep. It's late. That's like 10.30 night, you know. But even doesn't matter, he go program anywhere, but his mulati is very fixed. Very interesting. And of course, and uh, when I was living in Delhi, he was using me all the time to, for going to Didi office because I was the one who was driving in uh, Sankirtan bus. I was looking after. And he would say, Avasha, you must be ready. Do not go anywhere. Anybody say you go somewhere? No, say, I said that I need you to go to the office for the land. So I had to drive many, many times for the office and also there's only vehicle we have in the Sangitan bus. So I had to drive in Vietnam one too. So Ubrahman Maharaj and Ubrahman Maharaj. Every time I had to date for him. Okay, he'll come in leaving 10 o'clock, okay. But I have other department, book distribution and all. So I had to drop like 14 table all over Delhi, and then he will be ready for 11 o'clock, 10 to 11 o'clock, I need to go to the office. So he's always, you know, he's always enthusiastic. So in this way, yeah, he was looking after me, and he's, we have a great association with the Krishna Maharaj, and uh, many other things to say, but this is well, I'll say stop here, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. You have shared such intimate associations with uh, yours with Maharaj. It's really inspiring. I, now I request His Grace Gopal Gopraj Prabhu to come and speak a few words, few words about uh, Maharaj. I've had 
many times uh, been fortunate to sit in the same temple room and listen to Maharaj give classes. I cannot repeat, unfortunately, the way he gives class. But uh, I also, uh, going back over the years, I had the, the privilege, not that I, I can't, I don't intend to glorify myself, but I had a, a unique privilege that uh, every time an arriving sannyasi would come to the airport, I would be dispatched by <laughs> Baba Prabhu to go pick them up. So I've, I've had that honor uh, to pick up and to, to bring different disciples to the temple, uh, just as a service. And so many, many years ago, when we didn't have such a broad congregation, we had uh, a, a nice group of devotees that basically had to do so many different things. But it was wonderful always to even uh, to hear Maharaj from the altar, because quite often in the, in the early morning classes, I had service on the altar. Uh, and, uh, but you, you can hear a pin drop uh, in this room when Maharaj was speaking. So I'm just uh, thankful for that privilege. And like uh, Balabhadra and Siki have been saying, it's our duty to, to glorify the Guru. This is basically our passport to the spiritual world. Uh, we might seek so many material passports and visas to go here and there to do this and that, but the only thing worthwhile is our Guru because the Guru is a connection to Krishna. So we have to glorify the Guru. And as we said uh, a day before yesterday about Srila Prabhupada, Krishna says that one should think of and serve the Guru as you serve him, meaning Krishna. So we have a very, very deep duty to the Guru. I have not been able to fulfill my duty I am seeking the blessings of all of you to, to help me do my duty to Guru and Krishna. So we're, we're like a devotional family. Uh, and there, there are no, uh, in a family everything is tight knit and one member helps the other. So that's our duty to help each other. If we forget something that's not good, it means we're not remembering the guru. So God brother or God sister can easily remind us, hey Prabhu, you're not doing it. This is not good. So I'm asking all of you to pray for me and certainly I am so elated to be in this audience. There's like close to seven million people in Atlanta right now. And how, how many are in this room? Just a handful. So now you can, you can kind of get that sense of what a family really means. Uh, it's a very unique situation to be in. Uh, we don't want to lose our spiritual family. Uh, because without it, believe me, I, I, there's no way I could be here if I wasn't in the association of devotees. And Sri Prabhupada has said, this is a quote, that association is the most important factor in the world. Thank God. 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Oh, my God. 